Hi, my name is Brett, and I'm currently recovering from a dangerous and extreme belief system. A belief system that if I had not taken action, most likely would have landed me in jail or even a mental institution. This belief system has many names, but it is most often referred to as libertarianism. For years, I would frighten ordinary people with long rants about the non-aggression principle. That's the central ethical stance in libertarianism, which asserts that the initiation of physical force against persons or property or the threat of such force is inherently illegitimate, regardless of what kind of excuses somebody makes up to aggress. I know. When I hear myself say it out loud today, I realize how crazy I once was. But I've made a lot of progress. Through my exposure to new points of view and sources of information, I've realized that I was being just too optimistic about the huge group of people who live their lives peacefully and mind their own business, and too cynical about the tiny group of people who disregard these utopian notions of non-aggression, property rights, and self-ownership in order to keep us safe and maintain stability. Even though a lot of the time it does seem like they have no problem treating our communities and the entire planet like their own personal f***ing whoa. I'm sorry. Still trying to let go of some of this negative imagery. Like I said, recovery is a process. But it wasn't just the flaws in libertarian thinking. It was also the dangers. This occurred to me one day when somebody who lives in the real world asked me the question, what would you do if you woke up tomorrow and government was gone? I had never thought about it before, and at that point, a terrifying worst-case, worst-case scenario started to play out in my mind. And before I was even halfway through this imaginative what-if scenario, things got so dark that I was forced to swear off the philosophy of liberty for good. Because of the difficult economic situation, we would have to assume that there would be a significant spike in property crime, theft and looting. Now libertarians might try to argue that property owners would demand protection services and somebody would quickly rise up to meet that demand. But I think things would be a little too chaotic for that. Now imagine this, a sudden and enormous increase in violence. The first kind of violence would be property owners trying to defend what is theirs, which libertarians would argue, rightfully so, that they have a right to do. But friends, this is a worst case scenario. So there would also be a rise in violent crime in furtherance of theft, and things would quickly spin even more out of control. Now, libertarians might again argue at this point that whatever violence or theft is taking place would be far less than what the state was carrying out the very day before. But don't worry, my fellow non-libertarians, I'm about to make this scenario much, much worse in my imagination. Even if most people turned out to be peaceful and capable of rational thought and recognize that violence is totally impractical, there's always going to be bad people. And they would have decided, for whatever reason, that they were going to continue going around and enacting random violence on whoever they want to get whatever they need. Now, at this point, again, the libertarian would chime in and say those kinds of thugs would be drastically outnumbered by peaceful and cooperative people. But in the worst case scenario, these violent actors wouldn't stop just because they were outnumbered. They would band together. They would carry out their violence in predation against the people in groups to increase their chances of success. And what we would have over time, maybe it would take a few weeks, maybe it would take a few months, maybe even a few years, groups of these violent marauders going around, finding communities filled with peaceful and productive people, getting along and living their lives, and they would go in and kill them all and take their stuff. And I can already hear the libertarians saying that is so stupid, if these violent marauders killed all the productive people, they would die off themselves. Since they don't know how to do anything besides violence, they would eventually starve or run out of resources. And that would be the end of it. But I'm one step ahead of you. See, over time, we have to assume that the marauders, the thugs, would get smarter. 
And after several bands of these thugs had died from starvation or lack of resources because they killed all the people who knew how to do and get all the stuff, they would realize that when they raid a village, they have to leave some productive people alive so they can come back later and take the new stuff that they made. And over time, they would actually develop even more subtle and efficient methods of exploiting their victims. Instead of roaming around or periodically going back to a village and killing more people and taking more stuff, sooner or later, they would just move in and live amongst the productive people. See, in the worst case scenario, they would be really diabolical. Instead of all this back and forth, back and forth, surprise, here we are again, within a few years, people would just be used to them. And they would also get used to the fact that when they want to, these thugs are going to take their stuff. Maybe rough them up a little bit. It's getting pretty bad, isn't it, libertarians? Well, guess what? It gets worse. From the darkest corners of my fear-filled imagination comes this idea. What if these thugs, these predators, were so clever that eventually they realized that their little system could continue unabated if they just bribed the people. You see, after the thugs took everything they wanted for themselves and gave whatever they wanted to their friends, what if they just took whatever was left and offered it as kind of like a kickback to the productive people in the community? We are your masters. But if you tolerate that, maybe once in a while we'll throw up a new building here or a new bridge over there, some pavement down over there. So why don't we just continue along with this little arrangement because, as you already know, we are really awesome at violence. And if you don't agree, we can still just kill you. Remember like how we used to do. I know this all sounds sick, but these kinds of people are out there, libertarians. You're going to have to face that. You know what else? If they were really clever, they would scare the people into compliance. Not with their own violence all the time, but they could actually threaten the people with the violence of other gangs. They could say, hey, you know, yeah, we might be violent, but guess what? We're not the most violent gang out there. A couple towns away, there's an even more violent gang. And if we weren't here, they would come here and kill all of you. We're actually protecting you from them. So, you're welcome. And once you bring the emotion of fear into it, it's over. People wouldn't be able to reason anymore. And this gang would now be there for good. Now at this point again, the libertarian chimes in and says, people are smarter than that. And sooner or later, somebody would stand up, if not many people, somebody would stand up and say, this is insulting. This is bribery. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to be robbed in exchange for little petty favors that could probably just as easily, if we put some thought into it, be done by the community. And I don't want to accept all of this robbery and threats just because of some scare story about some other violent gang that could come here. There's a violent gang already here. And the people would agree, and there would be an uprising, and that would be the end of it, says the libertarian. But I got some bad news. These groups of predators, the existence of which has apparently never even occurred to the people who want to live in some kind of libertarian utopia, They've got one more trick up their sleeve in the worst case scenario, and this one is a doozy. Now for this last one, you'll have to bear with me because this sounds so ridiculous and far-fetched, I'm not even exactly sure how this would come to be. But imagine this. The thugs somehow convince the people to surrender control of the channels of information, communication, and education to the gang itself. Again, I don't, I don't know how that happens, but in the worst case scenario, you have to think that it could be possible. Maybe they go after the children. Yeah, they bribe parents. People are already used to bribes with free daycare. I know it doesn't sound like something that good people would allow to happen, but if enough time had passed, these people would have become pretty habituated to dependence on the gang. As daycare becomes more sophisticated and better funded, the children are forced to stay there longer and longer. They are fed a new language and subsequently a new way of thinking about the predators. Instead of describing the relationship accurately with words like theft and threats, they're given new words that distort reality. First couple generations it might be tough, but after that, the kids would come home, they would complain, they would talk about how terrible it is, they would talk about how much it sucks, and the parents could just dismiss it by saying something like, hey, we all have to do it. And even though this worst case scenario, I admit, is very far-fetched, 
The libertarians at this point would have to admit that within a generation or two, the violent predators would have no more significant problems managing their herds of peaceful and productive people. They might have to deal with the occasional rogue who questions their authority or their legitimacy, but probably not even directly after a while, the indoctrinated people would do that for them. They would say without the violent gang, which, and it wouldn't be called that anymore, they would have thought of a new name for it, who would maintain order? Who would take care of the children? Who would protect us from violent people who want to do us harm? Who would keep our food supply safe? As my worst case scenario vision of this anarchistic world grows even darker, other groups of thugs recognize the success that this gang has had and they copy that model. It is replicated all over the world. Even as their control over the people stabilized, the gangs would still be plenty violent. They would fight with each other. Here's a really sad thing. Because of the messages that all the people were absorbing in daycare, they would actually cheer when the gang that preys on them slaughters a group of people that another gang preys on. It could get that bad. But if this got bad enough and continued long enough, the entire world would just become divided up into these gang territories. And that this most tragic ending, a good person, a hardworking and peaceful person who just wanted to live his or her life free of coercion, would realize that there is no place on earth that they could go. The end. Wait a minute. Oh, shit.